Bill Toon is driven by the pursuit of sustainability. In 2003, he founded Ecolife Conservation. Ecolife is working to reduce the footprint of agriculture around the world to create more food for human beings and more space for wildlife. The system we're using is aquaponics, the stacking of fish farming and vegetable farming because of the huge reduction in footprint and water use. A lifelong interest in wildlife conservation led Bill to recognize that the most effective way to protect animals is to help people. So the first time you got hired by the zoo, how old were you? I was 16, got hired to pick up trash. <laughs> and then? Um, off to graduate school to study the sex life of birds and that led me to the condor program and conservation. Oh, and how did that bring you back here? A trip to Madagascar really changed my perspective on conservation. And I realized traditional conservation wasn't working. And that led me to aquaponics. Wow, so this is an aquaponics system. Yep, this is aquaponics, fired by fish and floating on water. So lettuce, romaine, basil, kale? Uh, yeah, we can't decide what to grow because everything grows so well. So we've been playing with a lot of different things in here. Look yep. how densely it's planted. Yeah, we can grow things like lettuce and chard and that sort of thing on 10% of the land that a commercial farmer would grow them on. At EcoLife's demonstration system in Escondido, California, Toon and his staff experiment with growing plants and fish to create the most effective systems. Well, these are the fish that drive the whole program. These are tilapia. We work with tilapia because we like to eat what we grow. <laughs> and that the, the system works just like the earth works, which makes it perfect. The fish are here thriving. They produce a bit of waste. That waste is run through a system. It's converted into something plants can use. The plants clean it up and send clean water back to the fish. So this is a closed loop system. It's a closed loop system. We're able to raise tilapia on only 1% of the water that a commercial tilapia farm would use. And we grow our vegetables on about 10% of the water that a traditional farming system would use. Plants grow in little plastic cups set in floating rafts. Show me how this works. Yeah, so the lettuce is in a little pot. Oh my gosh, look at those. Isn't that something? And the cleanliness of the roots tells you a lot about how cleanly the system in, is working and how efficiently it's working. And it's just a little tiny plug in there. Yeah. That's even two plants. Yeah. That's, I, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of speechless. That doesn't well, happen too often. It's pretty remarkable. And then to add to it, this whole system is powered by the sun. So it's run on photovoltaic panels. And in a three and a half inch rain year, San Diego averages about seven, we can run this farm all year round on rainwater. Just on rainwater? Yeah. This aquaponic system's inputs are minimal. There's no fertilizers, no herbicides, no insecticides. Just some fish food every other day. The system includes a network of pumps and filters. This is where the magic happens. This filter is a, is a pond filter and it has two parts. The first is a mechanical filter and it basically, you can see, it's catching all the solid waste. Yep, all the mucky, yucky stuff. And then the other filters in here, the blue and the gray ones, act as a, a place for the bacteria to live. The bacteria that live on these biological filters are converting that ammonia into nitrite, and then a second set of bacteria is converting it into nitrate. And that goes into the pond, and the roots take up the nitrate from the water and use that to grow. Yep, exactly. Plant roots need oxygen as much as they need water and nitrates. But too much water with too little oxygen and the plants literally drown. So how does this work? I, I plumbed this line so that as the water comes from the fish tank back into the grow bed, um, it's, it's aerating the water. So we kind of get some free aeration, but we also use air pumps like the kind you would have in an aquarium. And those are, those are in the grow bed as well. So it's that turbulence that keeps the, the surface tension Yep. And, and brings air into the water. Exactly. Lettuce and other greens do really well in this experimental system. Martin and his colleagues are testing peppers and basil too. I love looking at all the basil. I take it you're experimenting to see what's gonna work? Um, we kind of know what works a little bit. Uh, this, this system's only a month old. This pond is only a month old? Yeah. Well, how long does it take to go from the newly planted lettuce to the mature lettuce? Um, anywhere from 30 to 45 days, depending on... That quick? Yeah. Plants grow up to 25% faster in aquaponics because they have access to all the water and nutrients that they want. 
And it'll be more towards 30 uh, around summer, you know, when you're getting more sunlight. That's it's kind of shocking, actually. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. Bill Toon and his associates see aquaponics as holding promise for growing vegetables in arid regions around the world to save water, to reduce the use of chemicals, and to ease the pressure that turns native habitats into farm fields. While eco-life experiments with aquaponic systems in remote areas, they remain firmly rooted in the local food system, where they focus on future farmers. So who likes to learn actually outside here? OK, great. At Madison Middle School in Vista, California, seventh and eighth grade science students are diving into aquaponics with help from Ecolife. Aquaponics is just something new and different to where you're not always going to do that stereotypical getting your hands dirty in the dirt and working. It's something new, innovative, and just a huge thing to learn. Students are designing, budgeting, engineering, and constructing a school garden, including an aquaponic system. This is their living laboratory. They really want to go with this aquaponics idea. So we've been working on that in class and during lunch and after school. And so finally, here we are. After two and a half years, we're finally starting. Just take these bricks and we'll line them up around however you guys want. Ecolife Aquaponics Program Manager Kate Cole works with these students to introduce them to aquaponics systems and why they're important. So our next generation is going to be responsible for helping us create a sustainable food system. And it's important for them to learn how to sustain ourselves and feed ourselves in a way that's not going to be depleting our resources. We started out working with Kate on an aquaponics Trello board, which is kind of like a mix of Pinterest and Facebook combined. The students were responding to questions online, doing research. Student ownership is a big part of this program. Besides the aquaponics, they're planting a succulent garden. They're weeding their garden beds. They're starting seeds for raised vegetable beds. All right, here's some more seeds. And they're personalizing the space with garden art. They take their role seriously, but they keep it all in perspective. So we're doing worms right now, but I know there's all these people building an aquaponics pr uh, a system over there. That's, uh -huh. You were involved in all of that, right? Yes. And why is this important? Why do you like aquaponics? I like aquaponics because it saves a lot of water. And since we're kind of still in a drought, it helps with saving water. And you still get fresh food and you don't have to, you don't use pesticides. It's, everything's going to go through the nitrogen cycle. You guys are going to, you guys learned about that in class? Yeah. yeah. So, so it goes from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate and the plants can take up nitrate. With help from Ecolife staff, the students set up the pond and install the plumbing. In a few weeks, when the water is stabilized, they'll add fish and plants. Aquaponics inspires these young minds to think about science and the environment. It presents an opportunity for hands-on learning and team building lessons they'll carry into their future academic and professional lives. I hope that they're going to get a love for being outside and also a really great understanding of where their food is actually coming from and just coming up with such a great solution to some problems that we're facing in our local community.